two Norwegian adventurers, Joshua French and Jostolf Moland, got in a pickup van with their chauffeur, Abidi Kasongo. Others on the van were two other passengers, Gina Kepo Ayla and Kasimu Arajabo. While crossing into the eastern Congo, 67 miles east of Isangani, this happened. This is the Congo murders. Uh, Abiri Kosongo was found dead with bullet wounds, suggesting murder. According to French Molan, one of the local passengers were guilty for Kasongo's death. Gino Kaipo Ayla and Kasimu Arajabo, who immediately fled the scene after the shots, claimed that Chostov Mulan fired his shotgun at Kasongo and thus ending up killing him. Regardless of what killed the driver, both parties agreed that French and Molan dragged the dead driver out of the van, then drove into the pitch black Congolese jungle. The two Norwegians fled to the national park Okapi, waiting for some contacts to help them out of the situation. They camped in the park for several days waiting for rescue. However, instead of an escape, French got restrained and caught by Congolese forces. Moland, after being on the run in the Congolese jungle, met the same fate a couple days later. So who were the alleged murderers, Chostol Moland and Joshua French? And how could such a situation even happen? The Democratic Republic of Congo has had a history of a very unstable security situation. Therefore, a market for private security companies were booming. Both Molan and French had a military background from Norway and the UK. Additionally, the two Norwegians had worked with certain security services within different African countries. In 2008 to 2009, Molan and French had a base in Uganda and during this time they had a mission in Congo for the private security company Special Intervention Group. No one really knows what kind of services they offered, but during that time, French claim that both him and Molan were working for peace, but also money and adventure. They would describe themselves as being a bit different from the rest of the Norwegian people. Molen especially did not feel very home there. People who knew Molen would describe him as being a bit rugged, but a person that seeks exciting new challenges. We can also say the same for French. Neither of them felt like they could stay in Norway. They had to branch out, this time to Africa. At the moment of arrest, Molen and French both wore Norwegian military ID and ID cards with the cover names John Hunt for French and Micah Callen for Molen, which connected them to SIG, Special Intervention Group. They were for that reason thought of as military and put on military trial in August of 2009. Jostol Moland and Joshua French both were sentenced to death on the 8th of September 2009. They were guilty of the charges espionage, homicide, armed robbery and possession of illegal firearms. Though the Norwegians both were sentenced to death, in Congo, a death sentence usually means lifetime in prison. Additionally, the Congolese authorities pushed forward a compensation claim on 360 million Norwegian crones, that would be 39.8 million American dollars against Norwegian authorities. Norway quickly denied the proposal and the trial was appealed. The 10th of June 2010, Josto Mulan and Joshua French were once again sentenced to death. This time, only Mulan received the death sentence. French was only seen as an apprentice and this sentence was not appealed. The two Norwegians were initially transported to a prison in Kisangani. But in December 2011, Moland and French were transferred to the prison in Dolo in the capital, Kinshasa. But how was prison for Moland and French? I will now show you and translate real and authentic footage from when Moland and French shared a cell together in Kinshasa. The footage shows precisely the life within Congolese prisons. Yeah. Da er det portrettintervju med Kjøstad Moland. Dag, dag. Dag, dag. 
Jeg er Joshua French, og jeg har den glede å kunne intervjue deg litt i dag om The Personal Facts and Matters. Ja, i dag skal vi ta litt praktiske ting i cella i Kristengalen min. Hva har du da lyst til å vise oss? I dag har jeg lyst til å vise og forklare hvordan jeg forbereder meg på en natts søvn. Da begynner vi med dasspapir. Det må deles i to. Det må ikke være for stor mengde og ikke for liten mengde. Som brettes og dyttes godt opp i nasebåret. Det er to grunner til det. En er at på morgenen så er du rabele som kommer. Og han bruker altså så store mengder med det å gå ratt på seg. At han er i rommet fem minutter etterpå at han er ratt. Så må vi ha øreplugger. Noen vanlige gule. De setter vi inn der. Så klokka seks så har de alltid denne her synga si. Og den holder på å drive med sinnssyk. Og eneste måten vi kan få til å ikke høre den, det er at man da... Congolese prisons were known to seldom cover the basic necessities for their residents. They did not receive clean water or food from the prison. Therefore, prison stay without regular visits from family and friends who gave them food and water were more often than not deadly for the residents. Luckily for the two Norwegians, their mothers, Mathilde Molden and Carrie Hilde French, along with some friends, made sure that they would get enough food and clean water. Additionally to the horrendous living conditions inside the prison, illnesses and sickness were widespread. On the 18th of August 2013, a new discovery was made. Moland was found dead in his cell. Jeg sov over han, men jeg syntes jeg så noe ute på badet. Så jeg klatrer ned, og der finner jeg han inne på badet, som er temmelig lite. Jeg tenkte nok først og fremst handling, og at her var det om å gjøre og gjøre noe, ikke så å tenke eller føle for mye. Og da finner jeg fort ut at han hverken har pust eller puls, og da gir han opp. French described death of his best friend as a huge setback. At first, both Congolese and Norwegian investigators concluded that it was suicide by suffocation. However, Congolese authorities pulled back the conclusion and accused French for murder of Moland. Following these events, French was put on trial February of 2014 and was sentenced to death once again for the alleged murder of his best friend. The death of Chostov Moland was not an easy one for French. The person he shared a cell in Congo and death sentence with was now gone. And this had a great impact on the Norwegian. Soon after the death of Molin, French himself got very sick. Eventually, he would get so sick that the prison had to transport French to a private safe house, a very rare treatment given to prisoners in Congo. There, he was placed under a house arrest. However, French was not the complacent type. Under his house arrest at the safe house, he would spend most of his time thinking of an escape plan. French escaped from the house using the plates in the ceiling, then jumping down to the garden from the loft. He would proceed to stealthily sneak out of the property. And now his plan was to find an embassy or a river. However, disorientated, French hardly knew where he was. He spent several hours mapping out his location. Now his plan was to swim over a river to Congo Brazzaville, but as fate would have it, his escape would cut short. An employee from the prison randomly spotted French as he was making his way up the river and, as you would expect, Joshua French got caught and sent back to captivity. The 27th of February 2017, Congo's Minister of Justice revealed that French would be pardoned during this year. And as he said, French was released May of 2017 and returned back to Norway. There are many theories as to why French was released. Some think that the influential Israeli businessman Dan Kettler was a big part of the negotiations. Whereas French himself has said that he owes a big debt to the diplomat Adil Oyan for the work he has done to have him released. Additionally, a meeting between Kari Hilde French and Abedi Kosongo's wife was also a deciding factor in the release of Joshua French. After eight years in prison, persecution, trials and international affairs, the Norwegian was finally home. Still, there are questions to be answered. 
Who killed Abedi Kasongo that night? Why did Molen smile so ominously on that very specific picture? And did the Norwegians do anything wrong in the first place? There is a lot to be discussed, and Joshua French actually opens up in a podcast series to Weed the Man. If you can understand Norwegian by any chance, and are curious to go more in depth, I strongly advise you to do some research there. Regardless, Joshua French, a man racking up a total of 4 death sentences, walks as a free man today. And is that fair? Should he be in jail for something he did, or maybe didn't do? And should he be punished for the crimes? What do you think? Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. You are a real one for that. As always, I hope you enjoyed this quick dive into the Congo murders. I remember this case as being a very talked about case when I was younger. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe as it helps me make more content just like this. I love you guys. Stay curious.